I was born in Richmond, Virginia in July the 31st, 1931. I grew up in the city of Richmond. I worked all around Chesterfield and Richmond and the whole thing in a nutshell, I was born, raised, worked, and retired within a 10 mile radius of where I'm living right now in Chesterfield County. My wife and I went to the same elementary school. In one year, they had a Christmas pageant and we both had a part in it. My wife was in the third grade, I was in the fifth grade. And we all were in this student, in this teacher's class to uh, practice and get our parts all ironed out. Everybody had a seat except my wife, Carl. And so I told her she could sit on my knee and scared her to death. Uh, <clears throat> but I must have been a slow learner because all of that took place in the, uh, when she was in the third grade. And it took me to high school before I noticed her again. But it must have worked out pretty good because we got married in uh, October 2nd. 1953. So we've been married, what, 58, 58 years. And I think I did pretty good. Couldn't, did a, couldn't have done any better. And I got three kids and very nice children. And got two sons and a daughter. And we love them dearly. And just a good family. I got grandchildren, they got uh, four grandchildren and four great-grandchildren. So life couldn't have been any better for us. I was a city boy, but when school was out for the summer, I had an aunt lived out in Chesterfield County. She had chickens and uh, gardens and the things that country people have. I would go out there the day school was out for the summer and stay to the day before school started in the fall. And it was other country children out there that I made friends with. And uh, matter of fact, they were dear friends. And we'd do our chores during the day. And after lunch, we'd head to the creek, Fallen Creek. And we'd go down there and swim. As a matter of fact, that's where I learned to swim. The summers were really fun. Gathered eggs work in the garden a little bit. And uh, my uncle, he worked the night work, uh, worked shift work. Her and I used to play rummy. They didn't have any children. So we'd play rummy at night and just do different things that you do. And it was really enjoyable. It was a good childhood. It was better than staying in the city for the summer whole lot better. My father was 20 years older than my mother. My daddy was born in 1888 in Brunswick County. And he was a weekend alcoholic. He worked every day. Everybody thought a lot of him. But when the weekends come, he had to drink. And most of the time he drank heavy. He didn't have an automobile. He didn't have an own a home, and he provided for us. And I don't know how much he contributed to our well-being, but we ate good, and our house was clean, and the beds were clean, had plenty of food. But he didn't own anything to contribute to his retirement. And as he got older, I think he realized that uh, 
what a mess he had made of his life. And as time went on, just before he got ready to retire, he ended his life. And I looked at him and made up my mind then that I wouldn't go raise my family in an environment like that. And so far, I haven't done it. My daddy was a weekend alcoholic, but during the week he worked every day, was well thought of, his bosses, neighbors, anybody had any contact with him thought a lot of him. But on the weekends when he'd get to drinking and get drunk, he was hell on wheels. He just raised cane all the time. And most of it come because he was out of alcohol or out of money. And a many night, I'd be on my date before I was married. And my mother would call me to come home because he was raising cane or have a gun pulled on him. We've had a, the shotgun pulled on us more than once. And when he was drinking, he didn't like me because I took up from my mother and protected her. And that was a scene that I didn't want to live through any more than what I'd already gone through. And like I said, when he was sober, you couldn't find a nicer guy. But when he was drunk, you couldn't find a bigger hellion. And that's the way my childhood went. And that's the way my adult life went all the way until he passed away. I've been home a many night where my mother would call me and tell me to come home. He had a gun on him. And I'd go home and dad would be. As soon as he calmed down and had the opportunity, I'd take that gun, take it all apart and hide pieces in every direction so that he found one, he'd, he'd have to find them all to get it put back together. And that was just some bad memories in my childhood and in my adult life. When we were dating, uh, my husband never really talked about his dad much because he was afraid probably that my mother wouldn't let him keep coming around and dating me if she knew he was an alcoholic. But it so happened my mother's daddy was an alcoholic, so she would have understood, but as time went on, we rode streetcars to the uh, movies and on dates, and we were waiting for the streetcar, and I could tell my husband was getting nervous, and I didn't know what was wrong, but his dad was across the street, <laughs> and he was at a beer joint, it was the weekend, and here he comes across the street, and I've never met him, and I didn't know who he was, really. And all of a sudden, <laughs> he came over there and he wanted to invite me to Sunday's lunch. And I didn't know what to say, but anyway, I didn't go. And I still didn't know what was my husband's problem about him drinking, because I didn't realize that he did drink, because he had never told me. But anyway, that was the only time I ever met the man. And he wanted me to come to dinner. He stressed, whenever you give somebody your word, you make sure you keep it. Because that's the only thing that you have, is your word. And I tried to do that. I, I, I try to do it to this day. It's, if I commit myself to something, I try to stand by it. And like I say, he was a good man when he was sober. But alcohol would send him in the wrong direction. And back in those days, most all the old men drank and hung out at the beer joint. And, uh, back in those days, it, we lived uh, three or four blocks from a joint. And sometimes they would head home ossified and you'd see them laying on the sidewalk. And, they just couldn't make it. They'd lay in somebody's yard until they'd get them up. And <clears throat> that's the way it was. And alcohol is all right, but 
it's not to that extent when they got a drink like that. It's not a good. I'm not that much against alcohol, but I'm against drinking and getting drunk. As a child, my husband had a very uh, hard time accepting the way his father would treat him, but it was due to the alcohol. And one time he broke a, um, a glass bottle and chased him up on the roof, and that traumatized him. For, for even to today, he has a hard time talking about it. Well, who wants anybody to think that their father did these things? He was a child, he couldn't have any control of that, but he still was ashamed of it and didn't want anybody to know about it. But that's part of life. He couldn't help it. He was a, a victim. He went to the hardware store that day and he was a man that joked a lot and everybody knew him. And this guy said, what you gonna do with this rope, Mr. Brown? He said, I'm gonna go home and hang myself. And he said, oh sure, and thought he was joking. Well, he wasn't joking. He went home, wrote a note, don't come in the attic. And that's where they found him. He was he hung himself. And my husband has a hard time talking about this right to this day. But anyway, it's better than it used to be. But it bothers him. But he's a good man and I don't have any any complaints at all. He couldn't be a better father or a husband. Uh, to anybody. He's just a good man.